And good morning. Yesterday we had fog at this time that was <laughs> really thick, right? Up into Portland, we have an advisory for fog this morning posted from about Wilsonville south down to Eugene. Uh, so far, the fog map, you're looking for areas shaded. Here we are, Marion County, the fog down to a mile visibility and dense fog down in Eugene. So that's where it's at right now. Otherwise, this goes on to be a, a pretty quiet day. We have a thin cloud deck up top over Portland and a temp that's well above freezing 40 degrees out at the airport. So to the bus stop we go. The fog areas we talked about, otherwise a mix of cloudiness, some thin spots out of the gate. 38 degrees on average, partly cloudy at noon, 45 kids get out of school. Partly sunny to mostly sunny and 53 degrees today. Rob, thank you. I'm thrilled to announce that three new affordable housing projects have been awarded with the remaining Portland Housing Bond funds. This is a critical milestone. Portland leaders are trumpeting big gains when it comes to affordable housing. But we're also seeing yet another hiccup when it comes to opening organized villages for those living on our streets. Maggie Vespa has covered homelessness here in the city for years, and she's joining us this morning. Maggie, let's start with the progress. Yeah, definitely, Brenda. It is years in the making, but it's progress nonetheless. So let's talk about it. Housing Commissioner Dan Ryan, who you just saw there, announcing yesterday the city has spent the remaining funds from a $258 million housing bond, which was approved by Portland voters in 2016. So five plus years later, the commissioner says the city has taken that money, which was supposed to open 1,300 affordable housing units, and they've managed to stretch it to opening more than 1,800 units. Close to 600 of those will open this year. And Brenda, as you heard, the commissioner says he's really thrilled by that progress. Yeah, but of course we are talking about a housing bond from 2016. And five plus years later, as you said, that money still on the table unspent. Yeah, it was. And I asked the commissioner, Ryan, uh, his office about that timing. We got this statement via email saying the ballot measure committed to spending the money within five to seven years. So, quote, according to his office, we are not only on schedule, but we are also delivering 559 more units than originally anticipated from the bond. So they say this is going according to plan. OK, got it. Now to part two of the story, if we can. The city also made an announcement and it was talking about its safe rest villages. A uh, spoiler alert, still no hard <laughs> dates for any of those on when they might open. I know we know a lot of people want those dates and you know, the city has promised to open just to kind of recap here more uh, six villages last year, I should say, but they failed to meet that deadline of opening those six by the end of the year. And in fact, they've only chosen three of the six sites at this point. And now there's a twist in the plan for one of those sites, the one along north uh, southwest NATO, excuse me, near I-405. The city is now planning to move an already existing homeless village from inner southeast Portland to that NATO site. And they say that'll happen this spring, but it does mean that site won't host a new village. It won't take in dozens of new people. So we asked the city if they're planning to pick a location to replace this one. No answer to that question yet. And Portland officials have been really blunt. They say a lot of things are holding this project up, namely pushback from neighbors near those sites, which officials say they are working to address. But Brenda, it is worth noting the city of Vancouver, by contrast, has had success opening these organized homeless villages. Mm -hmm. Officials actually announced yesterday they're moving forward with plans to open their second this summer. They opened their first back in December. All right, let's hope we see similar progress out of Portland then soon. Maggie, thank you. Sure. All right, let's talk about the local restaurant scene for a moment here. Area restaurants that have struggled during the pandemic could be getting more money from the federal government. Last spring, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund provided $30 billion for owners across the country, and now lawmakers are trying to replenish it. Within just weeks of that program opening last year, more than 300,000 restaurant owners submitted applications for help. Oregon lawmakers in Salem are debating a new bill that would protect school superintendents. This comes after a series of high profile firings, the latest of which was the termination of Newberg's superintendent back in November. His dismissal prompted public outcry and two failed recalls of school board members. So this new bill, if it passes, would require school boards to provide 12 months notice if they're going to fire a superintendent with no cause, although they could still fire superintendents with cause. The bill also states that a district cannot direct a superintendent to ignore or violate state or federal laws.
districts can still remove a superintendent for a whole variety of, of reasons. Um, and at the end of the day, this is very simple, very common sense, and it just says you can't fire someone because they refuse to break the law. So we don't have any word yet on when lawmakers might vote on this, but of course, We'll keep you updated. In the meantime, a Newburgh school board member submitted her resignation. At last night's meeting, Inez Pena said that she would step down because of what she called a toxic work environment. She was appointed to the board in 2019 and was the district's first Latina board member.